Hey, what's going on guys? Jolts here, back with another build video, and today we're going over Lobster Amara. So, I haven't covered Amara in a very long time, and I apologize for that, but um, yeah. So, today we're going to be covering a max level Amara build, and the focus of the build is going to be the Lob. Yeah, so the Lob Shotgun used to be the laughing stock of the Borderlands community, and Gearbox was like, you know what? No. We're going to give it 10 times more damage. Um, the last hotfix actually buffed it by a ridiculous amount, so now it's a very, very good shotgun. Honestly, I wouldn't even compare it to a shotgun, it's more like a launcher. This thing is doing, like, ion cannon damage. It's insane. Anyways, this is a game save too, so if you want to download it, I will link it down in the description. Now, this save file is only for PC, there's no way to actually convert it to console yet. But hopefully in the future, we can, you know, figure out a way. Alright, let's jump into the build video and show how it works. Now, the gear in my build is anointed, but the only thing you have to worry about for the anoints are your shield and grenade combo. So make sure you have on action skill and bonus elemental damage for both of those. The only other major things for the build is having a lob, a driver com, and an elemental projector. Everything else is going to be optional. Alright, so first off, you have a low level sellout, and so when you shoot this at the floor, you can activate your elemental projector. Honestly, I don't really use the combo anymore, but I know a lot of people do. Um, I find it more of a hassle, but if you want to get more damage out of your build, you can do that. We have a face puncher, and the reason for that is because when you combine that with the cut purse artifact, you can regen chalk and ammo on demand. And now, since the build is only based on the lob, um, there is going to be times where you need ammo back. And now we have the main key of the build, and that is the lob. Again, yours doesn't have to be anointed, but just like any build ever, if you have the anoints, then it will help. So with the recent hotfix, the lob shoots a 3 round burst, and it will shoot slow moving balls that travel through the enemies. Now, the thing that makes this gun insane is that it will hit multiple times. So it's going to pass through the enemies and do many ticks of damage. And you can see with over, you know, 8,000 damage, it's going to be doing quite a bit. We have our second wind weapon, and honestly, you can go with whatever you want, ion cannon, whatever. But the focus of the build is shotgun, so I figured let's go for a TDOR. So homing merv TDORs can chuck and easily get you second wins. Um, that will include if enemies even go behind cover. As for the grenade and shield, use whatever you want. I'm using a transformer because we're going to be using a driver com, and that will apply a shock damage over time to myself. Now, because we have the transformer on, it's not going to actually damage us. We have the P-nade, and again, use whatever you want. The most important part is to have the action skill and elemental damage. We have a driver com, so we're going to run really fast and shoot the lob. And the faster we're moving, the more damage we're going to get. Also, because the lob will be based on close range, this will be quite beneficial from running from enemy to enemy. Try to get as many points as you can into mindfulness. As for the artifact, use a elemental projector. The victory rush part of it is optional, but you know, having more speed and damage is always good. And now, when we use our action skill, we're going to apply a damage over time to ourselves. Uh, that is because of the driver com. And that is going to boost that elemental damage by 96%. That is a huge buff. As for the other stuff, we have even more lobs, even more transformers, even more p-nades of all the elements. And finally, we have two more relics down here. Or sorry, artifacts. A cut purse to regen your ammo when using the face puncher. And then we have a snowdrift for, you know, if you're taking on like Wotan or something. Usually for mobbing, I put on the elemental projector. And for bossing, I put on the snowdrift. Again, the more speed you have, the more damage you have. So if you slide at full speed with a snowdrift, um, you can pretty much one-shot most bosses on Mayhem 4. Alright, let's go ahead and go over the build. First off, we have Anima, and that's going to give us more damage and duration on status effects. Apply that with the Driver Com and Elemental Projector. That will keep your speed and damage up. Only two points in Steady Hands to move down the tree. Um, we are focusing on the lob, so handling and accuracy isn't going to be a huge deal. Also, we will be point blank, so we're not going to be missing very often. One point into Infusion to apply our Augment to our gun. And now this is very useful because when you shoot a Fire Lob at, you know, a shielded enemy, it's going to do nothing. Uh, basically, we're replacing 8% of our Lob's damage to whatever your Augment is. So with this Shock Augment, I could shoot the Fire Lob at a shield, uh, destroy the shield, destroy the HP, destroy the armor, whatever. You can just combine whatever combo you want. So Infusion is really good for the setup. We have Tempest, more Elemental Damage and Shock Damage. Wildfire, you can spread your status effects to other enemies. And we're pretty much using this to move down the tree because these three don't matter at all. Dread, more gun damage. Deep Well, more mag size on your elemental weapons. I should have mentioned it before, but we're not doing melee, so we don't need that. The lob doesn't ricochet, so you don't need that. And this is sad damage. One point in sustainment for healing, so when you shoot the lob, you're pretty much going to stay at full HP. Now, 4% doesn't sound like a whole lot, but the lob is doing so much that it will keep you full. Finally, for the orange tree, the augment is going to be Tai set bind. You pick up one enemy in the group, and you kill that enemy, and the whole group dies. Now for the green tree, we have personal space. The closer you are to the enemy when you shoot them, the more damage you get. With the lob, you gotta be close, so more damage. Two points into clarity to move down the tree. That will give you passive health regen, so when you're being shot from enemy to enemy, it'll stop you from dying. 
The mob has splash, so arm steel is going to be great for that. You get more splash damage. Helping hands, we have two points into that for my class mod. That's going to give me some damage reduction. Six out of three on mindfulness. Remember, the more speed we have, the more damage we have. And now, I've seen a lot of people ask, why can't I get 25 stacks on this uh, skill? It's kind of weird. So on your grenade and shield, you have the action skill and annoying, right? For whatever reason, when you combine it with the driver com, your face lock will give you 25 stacks. Now, let's say you only had a shield with the anoint on it, not the grenade. Your face lock would only bring you to 15 stacks. So yeah, make sure you have the anoint on your grenade and shield to make sure you get 25 stacks. The final thing here is Flight Tiger. Um, you can switch off that when you need to. Adding that with Infusion means you can shoot a fire lob at, you know, an armored target and wipe out the armor and then wipe out their HP. You can do it all in one shot. All right, finally for the blue tree, just like any Amara build out there, we have our one in Do Harm, one in Violent Tapestry, and three into Fast Hands. Do Harm is going to give us more action skill damage, really good for the tie set bind. Fast Hands, more reload speed, weapon swap speed, and Violent Tapestry for some status effect chance. Um, it does help, you know, with Wildfire, but it's mostly to move down the tree. Alacrity is going to give us more reload, and the lob does have a small mag, so it is going to help quite a bit. Um, only four points there to move down the tree for later on. Transcend, we don't need it because we cannot crit with the lob, and also accuracy is not a huge deal with it. We're going to be point blank. We need some cooldowns, so Restless is going to be really good for that. Ascendant, that's going to boost your Soul Sap. Uh, nothing else on Ascendant really matters besides that. But Soul Sap, when you kill a face-locked enemy, you're going to get HP back. And for the final two points, I put those into Wrath for a little more damage. And now you can put those final two points into Laid Bear for the enemies connected to Tysa Bind. But honestly, I would prefer to have raw damage. And from rest doesn't really give us a whole lot of fire rate, and the lob is kind of slow. That's it for the blue tree, and the final thing I want to mention is, yeah, the soul fire skill too. The, uh, augment, sorry. Just like I said before, switch out your element to whatever you're fighting. So if you're fighting, like, a flesh enemy, like, only flesh, put this on. It will combo really well with infusion too. Alright, that's it for the skill trees, so let's go ahead and chop the build. Alright, so you can see here when we shoot the lob, it's going to be fire and shock damage. And the shock is because of infusion. And you can see the lob's doing, like, what, 200k... The infusion's doing like 4,000, not a whole lot. But if you miss your phase lock, I've been saying phase lock, I'm sorry, phase grasp, uh, we're gonna stack mindfulness, and now if we run and shoot this again, oh, I doubt myself, but 168k. Yeah. So we would bust through that shield, bust through their HP, and easily take out whatever we're fighting. That was a terrible example, but let's go ahead and go show it off in action. So we're at Gigamind, and he is shield and HP. So you want to combine that, you know, depending on what you're fighting. So shock, we're going to have that on, and fire. You cannot combine, you know, the same element twice. So you can't put on shock shield, shock grenade. It doesn't work like that. Um, it has to be two different ones. As for the lob, you can do fire or radiation. Uh, just, you know, matches weakness. So you're going to grab the air and stack mindfulness and run towards him. That's it. He died. That easy. So with the build, distance is your weakness. Uh, this build is not going to work for every single situation. Uh, for example, Grave Ward's going to be a little bit tricky because, you know, he's kind of far away. Uh, so let's go ahead and do... He's all HP, so fire, radiation, and let's infuse with, um, yeah, fire. There we go. We're going to jump down. And now, because he's too far away, we can't really just, like, do this. Not that simple. Uh, let's wait for his hand to come down. Start stacking. Okay, 25. We're going to run. We're going to shoot. And yeah, as you can see there, it will not be an insta-kill. And the reason for that is because some bosses, some enemies cannot have the orbs pass through them. So because the lob won't actually go through the boss, that means we're losing a lot of uh, tick damage. But even then, you can still do pretty good damage against them and take them down pretty easily. Alright, so we're at the slaughter shaft and, you know, enemies are going to have shield, armor, and HP. So we're going to do, yeah, fire's good. Corrosive's fine. Let's infuse with, um, shock. Cool. And honestly, you can use whatever you want. It doesn't have to be only fire. Let's do, I don't know, radiation. That's fine. So what we're going to do is pick up the enemy. Uh, no ties to bind, sadly, but shoot this guy. Yeah, he pretty much gets deleted. You. You're gone. How about you? You're dead. Yeah, this build's kind of dumb. The lob is ridiculous. So right here, we have ties to bind. We're going to shoot this guy. And they both die. Yeah. And now, if you're against, you know, face lock in the floor, it is kind of a cheap trick, but um, you can, you know, just pick up the enemy. You're still getting your stacks doing it that way. Yeah, almost a million there. All right, so launch your guy over there. Let's go ahead and pick him up. You want to go ahead and pick up, like, the most dangerous enemy and then go for them first. Quite a few things. Go for you. So all that stuff right there. Yeah, look at that. Deleted. We got through the shield, the armor, and the HP. And one burst. 
And that's pretty much gonna be the build. So it's pretty straightforward. You connect stuff, you shoot, they die. So the mob went from being one of the worst items in the game to being almost one of the best. And now I loosely use the term best because, you know, it doesn't work for every single situation. But it works for a lot of them. Anyways, that's gonna be it for the video. So go ahead and try out the build for yourself. Again, I will link a PC save down in the description if you wanna download it for yourself. And that should be it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, then please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And if you guys really enjoyed it, be sure to sub. You guys have a great day, and I will see you all later. Peace out.